it's a rock picking robot and it's a company called TerraClear. They actually just announced that they raised fifty million dollars from some venture capitalists. So nice. they're, you know, hot on the tails of raising some money. So we're gonna talk about what their tech is. Um, one thing that I think is interesting to start with first is actually to talk about the founder, Brent Frey, and his story of founding the company. So uh, Brent Frey is a serial software founder. He's already had two unicorns software companies that reached a billion dollar valuation are on the public market, Onyx and then Smartsheet. Smartsheet is much bigger of the two. After exiting Smartsheet, you know, successful software entrepreneur, he went back to his roots and he went back to his family farm where he grew up in Idaho and him and his family spent a summer there living and working on the farm. That's all he did. Oh, no that software. sounds blissful. Oh my God. Yeah, just like completely unplugged from software after taking these two companies to billion dollar valuations. Um, and he's like working there in the field and one of the most laborious parts of farming is after you plant the crops and before you can use your big machinery on it, you have to pick up all the rocks that are in the soil because the combine machines that you use for farming, like specifically think of farming corn, it's like a monster house on wheels. It's got all these arms and stuff. It basically does a lot of the manual labor of farming for you. These combine machines are like somewhere between half a million and a million dollars. Rocks can cause tens of thousands of dollars of damage. So it's worth your while to go pick up these rocks and not let them damage your combine machine. But Brent so, Frey's there like picking up these rocks and he's pissed off that there's not a better solution. Like Rightfully so. You know, there's robots that can pick weeds. Um, we talk, we've talked on the podcast so far about like a lot of ag tech stuff that's really interesting. And he's like, and still like me... You know, I've just been on the forefront of technology, software founder with billion dollar companies, and I have to go pick up rocks manually over and over and over again. Uh, you can take the man out of software, but the software can't come out of the man. I love it. Yeah. Exactly. Engineering mindset everywhere. He's he's sitting there looking to this like, I'm an engineer. This is a bug. I'm going to get rid of it. Well, um, but before we go further, I had a question about this. I'm not super familiar with farms, but I know you are. Isn't rock removal like a one time process? Like, can't you just like do it once and then just be done with it? So you'd wish and you'd hope that you could pick the rocks once and they'd never come up again. Yeah. Um, but yeah. rock picking actually is often an annual endeavor, which sucks because like there's two factors that kind of contribute. Like when you till the soil, you turn it to aerate it before you plant it. Mm -hmm. That can t like turn up some rocks and bring them to the surface. There's also okay. erosion. So like when wind and water blow by, they can remove soil and leave rocks at the surface. But the main one is actually called frost heaving. Um, and that's if you're in a you know seasonal desolate area with you know freeze and thaw that happens throughout the seasons. Um, the freeze and thaw of the soil actually heaves rocks up towards the surface. So rocks that can be a few feet underground after a few years of freeze and thaw will be lifted up to the surface. So you know even if you remove all the rocks this year, next year you're gonna go have to pick rocks again. Wait, I didn't know that. That's so insane. It's like the ground is spitting out rocks. Exactly. Yeah, nice. they're like spitting out rocks and you got to get rid of them that's why you see like a lot of rock fences and rock walls um at farms oh. because they you needed something to do with those rocks so they build a wall with them um but so that's the problem right okay rocks super labor intensive costly you know it sucks to pick up rocks and it can also cause injury to the workers what's the solution so uh, Brent Frey like, goes back to the drawing board. He's like, all this technology should already exist. And I think does already exist. So he made a robot arm that can mount to the front of any skid loader. Um, it can pick up rocks any size from 6 inches to 24 inches. It can pick up to 400 rocks per hour. And what the big money raise they just did for was to develop autonomous capabilities. So that this arm can, the hydraulics for the arm can be controlled autonomously and it also uses computer vision to target the rocks and pick them up and put it in the basket. Okay, so what what they have as a product right now is like this thing that attaches to a truck and like those loaders that used to play with in playgrounds, you go to a rock, you maneuver it over like a claw machine or something, you pick it up, you put it in. But now they've raised funding to do all of that autonomously. Exactly. And but but um, not the driving portion. Is not it just the driving the, okay. portion. Okay. They're not reinventing the wheel and making a new piece of machinery. What they're focusing on is making this arm that can operate autonomously and also make it, um, you know, relatively adaptable so it can or universal so that it can connect to most standard sixty horsepower skid loaders. Skid loaders. Skid loaders. Okay. So then then the person operating the skid loader would just drive to an area with rocks and then let the machine do its thing 
And then when there's no more rocks, they move to the next area, next area. So Exactly. And it's pretty similar to driving a combine machine, right? So you still need someone to drive the combine, but the combine arms are the one that's doing all the picking and the sorting of the, of the crops. Um, kind of similar to that, except I imagine it might be a little frustrating driving the skid loader because you got to start and stop to wait for rocks to be picked up. But still a major improvement over manually picking up rocks out of the ground. All right, so here's the thing. Like Again, I'm, I'm a farming novice. Correct me if I'm wrong. But with the combine machine, you know you need to go throughout the entire field to get stuff, right? But with the rock, like you're just kind of trying to navigate navigate your way through t- towards like where is the rock, where is – there are no rocks and trying to figure that out. Do they have anything to like address that? Yeah, well, that's where the second half of this technology comes in, which okay. is really interesting. They use autonomous drones that fly over your field with cameras and sensors, and they map all the rock locations and sizes. So they say any rock that's above eight inches in size, that's within six inches of the surface, these drones can fly over and map them where they are. And so you know as the farmer that you've got to go drive this arm over to this specific spot where there's a lot of rocks. And this spot over here, that there aren't that many rocks, you don't have to focus on at all. So it helps focus their time, um, also can help you identify where's a rock that's way too big, so you keep your combine machine away from it entirely. Um, it's a really interesting two-part solution between the robot arm and the drone, computer vision. None of this is like specifically new, but it's a really, really new implementation in agriculture. So I'm excited about this. It's like you have all these ingredients and you just brought them together to make something that's better than its individual parts, like making a pizza, basically. And yeah, well, there's uh, been a swath of robotics and AI tech, even in the agriculture space, but they haven't focused on like such a simple solution to a simple problem like this. Like we talk about robotic weeding and tending in episode five, we talked about smart plants that can detect arsenic in the soil. Episode 18, we talked about satellites to monitor moisture level at farms, but this seems really simple. Just like a robotic arm to pick up rocks. It's a really repetitive task. It's a menial task and it needs to get done. Um, and this seems like a great solution to me. Well, that that's what I was going to say. This is why, um, you know what? I, I have a pro and a con. I'm, I'm going to hit you with the pro first. I think this is a great implementation of automation because this is a task that like almost no one's doing. Um, I'm assuming it's just leaving some lands to, so that they can't be farmed at all. And the people that are doing it are really like hurting their backs and the work is for a really like limited amount of time. But by implementing the system, you're freeing up more land to do farming to begin with. So you're creating jobs and you're helping people not hurt themselves. So it seems like a net positive outcome for everyone involved. Yeah, we Uh, talk a lot about like what's the plus or minus of automation. This seems like it's net positive. The founder, Brent Frey, says you can recover over 400 million acres of land worldwide. Okay, that that's a good stat. Right now there we go. The amount of, amount of rocks that are there. It's basically too costly for farmers to remove these rocks. But this is going to lower that pain barrier to where the cost and time to remove those rocks and to make that land arable or farmable again, um, it becomes tolerable again. So it will make farmers more productive, increase the crop yields, basically a way of empowering farmers to pick rocks from the ground to save them time and money. I mean, that further reinforces what I was just saying, which is great, right? You have now 400 million acres that could also be used for farming. You're increasing the the supply of the supply chain. You're increasing the amount of labor that's possible for people to start working on. Um, now I'm going to hit you with my potential con. Uh, I, I know, again, very little about the farming sector, but on the technology side, I know a lot of farmers are upset at John Deere because the equipment they buy, the softwares, for example, are proprietary. If they want to fix any portion of it, they have to send it back to the factory, even if it's like something very minor. They don't have the right to repair. So this business model that John Deere is using on farmers is incredibly predatory. Now you have this solution, which sounds amazing. And I'm hoping since Brent has been in the software space for so long and he's a farmer himself. However, the solution is being um, marketed. I'm hoping like it's either open source or they have some sort of great support system that is not too costly for the farmers themselves. I don't know. Something that's exactly the opposite of how John Deere is implementing their business. Yeah. That, that's my I only potential. You, I know you're a huge open source guy. For oh. both, so I, I see that passion shining here. Um, but if they have the right to repair, I think this would be an interesting implementation. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, that's, that's my only spiel on it, but great topic. I'm really happy we talked about it. This isn't something that I would have stumbled upon, which is why it's great whenever our listeners tell us to look at a certain topic. 